I'm sure lots of people are going to be very, very excited to take action after hearing about the possibilities available to us during this episode. You don't need to work that hard and you don't need to pay that much to do that. And it drives significant value. We find out how Shopify store owners are getting ahead of the competition. I know for a fact that Shopify is heading that direction. We, we have calls for that. Your store is going to be the future of e-commerce. I think it's even subconscious, you know? Like you're going to one of those websites and you don't understand why you don't enjoy. I think implementing Dialog's strategies is genuinely going to transform how customers perceive and interact with. Welcome to the Dropship Unlocked podcast. I'm Lewis Smith, the founder of Dropship Unlocked, and with me is our client success coach, James Erdley. Now, when we're not recording the podcast episodes, we're running our own e-commerce businesses and helping aspiring entrepreneurs launch their own high-ticket dropshipping businesses. Keen to build your own six or even seven bigger business? My book, The Home Turf Advantage, is your blueprint for launching a profitable online store. Grab your copy at htabook.com today and let's get you started. Now sit back, relax, and let's unlock your potential with the Dropship Unlocked podcast. In today's episode of the podcast, we are very excited to have Omri Katz with us, the visionary behind Dialog, which is a platform revolutionizing e-commerce through personalized shopping experiences. Dialog transforms any store into a uniquely tailored journey, making each buyer feel like the store was crafted just for them. That's right. In this conversation with Omri, we find out how Shopify store owners are getting ahead of the competition to provide personalized experiences for their customers designed to improve your average order value and also your conversion rate. In this episode, Omri will unpack how deep personalization goes in enhancing buyer interactions and boosting your conversion rate and why no e-commerce store should be overlooking this critical aspect. Yeah, I'm sure lots of people are going to be very, very excited to take action after hearing about the possibilities available to us during this episode. We're going to explore the roots of this technology and the tangible benefits as well that it actually brings to us as e-commerce business owners. So get ready, prepare to dive deep into the world of e-commerce personalization with AI and learn how you can apply these insights to captivate and convert your audience more effectively. So let's get started. So today we are honored to be joined by Omri Katz on the Dropship Unlocked podcast. He is the mind behind Dialog, which is a cutting edge personalization platform designed to make every buyer's journey unique and tailored. So today we're really talking about the future of e-commerce, I believe, and how that will apply to your dropshipping or e-commerce business. So Omri, first of all, welcome to the show and thank you for joining us to explore the world of e-commerce personalization. Thank you for having me, James. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Pleasure's all ours. Really is fantastic to be speaking with you today. So Omri, let's let's kick things off to learn a bit more about you and your journey so far. So let us know about how did you actually get into creating Dialog, the e-commerce personalization platform? Six years back, I was working in an ad tech company, actually. And then we were buying and selling media online. So this is like the first encounter into internet in general. Uh, it was an e-commerce. And then I have this um, entrepreneurial passion. And at some point in time, I saw an opportunity in the market. I left the company and started my own bootstrap uh, venture. And basically what we were doing there is we were helping publishers basically increase engagement on their websites. So as opposed to e-com, when you are a publisher, basically your main source of income is rabbit is uh, ads. So the better you optimize your ads, the more money you make. So this is one way. And the other way was like every read, every potential um, user, every someone that goes into your website will try to read uh, articles as, as if you expose them to more and more articles, to more and more content, you're able to monetize better. So we've built a tool to basically increase engagement and increase the session duration. We built this engine for publishers and that was, it was successful. Uh, it was like a, 
a one-man show bootstrap company. Um, I received an offer to buy basically the company from another local company here in Israel. And I agreed to. And a year later, one of my childhood friends came to me and said, I'm going into, I'm getting into e -com. Uh So we started selling um, Christmas lights on Amazon. And he told me, listen, I'm looking for a partner. I know that you uh, sold Yspace. I have more free time now. Come join me. And I was curious. Obviously, um, never been there before. So we started this journey. And then one thing led to another. We started adding more and more products. Uh, we started with Christmas lights, moved into baby clothing and, and all kinds of different uh, products. Uh, at some point in time, we also uh, did a little bit of drop shipping with Shopify. And I think that was like the first encounter into the world of e -com. So those, I, I guess the dots got connected. What I was doing before that, you know, with increasing engagement, viewing websites, seeing opportunities to basically uh, enhance the, the, the overall experience, make sure that it's optimized on one hand, and then getting to know e-commerce and the fact that, okay, um, my job is obviously to bring traffic to my website make sure that I get the, the most relevant people coming, you know, in the door. And once they're in, what's next? Okay, how do uh, we do our best to make sure that they buy something and then they come in back? And how do we provide them with the best experience possible to basically optimize and, and, and grow and scale? And back then, when I looked at the market, it felt like all the solutions that are in the market are basically for the bigger players. So I couldn't find anything that was tailored to the size of, you know, SMBs. Um, it felt like most of the solutions are basically either very expensive, robust, expensive, you know, hard to maintain, or it was like your, those small apps that you can find on the Shopify store, um, you know, just one app for upselling in the cart, and then another app for bundles, and then another app if you want to do I don't know, like a product recommendation and couldn't find like a full suite of all those tools that will basically help you enhance the experience and optimize it and make sure that increase the main KPIs, which is conversion and AOV and help you scale. So this is why I decided to basically start dialogue. That was, uh, that was the thought behind everything because I wanted to have, you know, I wanted to have it for myself. And then um, basically um, we expanded and, and, and we released the first version and, and uh, we got pretty good response. And uh, actually I had one signed contract with a customer before we even had like our MVP. And so this is how we started. And then, uh, yeah, that was it. <laughs> that, was, that was the creation story. Well, I think there's so much crossover in what you were first doing and realizing that if you create a better experience for people on your website, then you'll be able to have a more successful business. And that's exactly the same in e-commerce. And then the timing seemed to align nicely there with, you know, your friend, your old friend getting in touch with you. So then you could put all that experience and knowledge into improving customers' journeys into e-commerce. So do you think as well that in terms of the timing point, not just in your own life, but also the technology that we have now compared to just five years ago or 10 years ago, we're starting to be able to access tools that allow us to improve the customer's experience a lot more now. Absolutely, I think that you know we can talk about uh, we can talk about a narrow aspect of you know tools that will help you increase uh, on conversion rate and AOV for ecom, and you can talk about ecom in general, but you can talk about everything. But basically, what you can see now is that AI is transforming. Everything, everything is like SaaS became in a way saturated, right? It's easy. It's easy to bring complex technologies and build products around them, make a good design and release them to the market. Um, so obviously the, the market took a huge leap over the past two to three years, I think. And, and in my belief, it will continue um, on that path. But absolutely, I see that like there are Great, great solutions now in the market. I believe that, but, you know, I'm not trying to sell myself, but uh, like I genuinely think that 
what we offer for SMBs is 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 great. Like basically, we try to take all the enterprise, you know, um, savvy technologies and 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 package it in a way that will fit the the smaller ones. And I think now you can see more tools doing the same thing around that, but you couldn't do it like a few years ago. And every basically every feature, every capability that we have that we want to release as part of the product roadmap, this is kind of, you know, our way of thinking. Okay, how we take this sometimes complex or sometimes or sometimes very uh labor intensive feature and we basically release it in a way that any size of store will be able to leverage it relatively quickly and hopefully we'll be able to also see ROI, which is basically what we are all here for fantastic so my understanding is that your your product it not only helps small business owners to package the tools that they need for their shopify store into one easy place one one, one place that's all together and it also improves customers journeys as well so you know that obviously helps the, the shopify store owner in the end because the customer has a better journey and that's going to increase the conversion rate um, so, so what are the main sort of features then that, that your tool provides to Shopify store owners? Yeah, so I think that everything that we do as part of the platform should be basically holistic, okay? So every feature that we offer, any capability that we offer needs to connect and, and basically live with the other features inside the platform. We offer anything from personalized product recommendations to... Um, personalized upselling, cross-selling options, product bundles, shoppable stories, post-purchase offers. We offer A-B testing capabilities, deep segmentation capabilities. All of that is basically with the main soul and purpose of helping merchants increase their bottom line revenue by providing better user experience, shopping experience, and basically help them improve the main KPIs which is conversion rate and AOV. Fantastic. So if you can imp- imp- you know, improve the conversion rate and the average order value, then you know, you're know you going to make a huge difference to your bottom line. So yeah, I think it should be exciting for all Shopify store owners to know that there is the technology out there where you know we, we can have a customer come to our store and the store can look more personalized for every customer so that you can really talk to them at whatever stage of the buying journey they're at. So that's it. To wrap it up, that's sort of what, what Dialogue can actually produce for your customers. Yeah, so Dialogue is a playground. It lets you do basically everything you want to. For instance, you want to have a banner on the homepage and you want to create different variations. So when someone comes to the website and they've purchased before, um, let's say you're, you're selling um, fashion, right? And someone came to the website, they purchased before um, men clothing, right? So the main banner will show them maybe um, something that's relevant to them with a men model um, as opposed to female that will go to the website and see a female model that is more relevant. So you can basically create content, personalize and segment the content. You can segment the messaging, even the titles of the recommendations that you offer. So I can give another example. Let's say that on your homepage, most of the websites that you go into, you'll see there's a specific structure. You have the hero banner, and then you scroll down, you'll see probably a navigation for the categories, the different categories on the website. You scroll a little bit more down, you'll see they start to show off uh, their, their product. And, and basically, there is this structure. What we come and say is that every part of this can be optimized. Every part of this can be personalized. So the first example was for the hero banner. But when you even when you show the products on your homepage, you can decide, for instance, to show for new visitors that will go to the website, show them your best sellers. But if you have returning customers, maybe show them, depends on the category you're in, but maybe show them complementary products, the products that they've purchased last week or last month. And if you are in the business of, you know, selling beauty and cosmetic or vitamins or whatever, and people basically keep coming back at the same time of the month or even food for dogs, right? You want to show them the product that they've purchased before with an easy call to action to add directly to the cart to basically cut through the navigation and discovery phase in the website and make life easier for them. So this is just, you know, two two examples. So this is what basically Dialog does around the personalization and the smarts of it. We also invest a lot of on the content side. 
So what we've witnessed is that shoppers buy with their eyes. Um, and then, you know, 95% of all recommendations will be with pack shots, right? You will see that product in its most regular form, I guess, white or gray background or transparent background. And then what we've seen is that if you will maybe show videos or maybe if you'll show some lifestyle images, it actually drives better results. So we've done this test across different categories. So what we wanted to do there is also make their life easier. So we have created native integrations with social media. So let's say that you have your Shopify store and you have your all the marketing materials and the user generated the content on your social media and those two are not really connected. We know that if people buy with their eyes and if you have a cool, cool video of a product, it will probably increase the likelihood for someone to be interested in it and hopefully even buy it. Why would you connect all this great media that you have outside of your website and all the different um, marketing channels and basically drive it back to the website and present it in a cool way? So even for the basic product recommendation, even for this recommendation for, for showing off your best sellers on the homepage, maybe do it with cool videos and lifestyle images. So we've connected Instagram and TikTok into dialogue. And essentially, every time that, you're, that the marketing manager or even the owner of the store will upload something to their Instagram account, it will automatically be uploaded directly to dialogue and then pushed back to the website. So we've created this. Yeah, and that's powerful from a customer's perspective. If they see a photo, they really like and interact with on social media and then they go to the website and see that same photo it's that congruency that they've got straight all the way through that experience absolutely and i think this is what you're talking about is, is the next stage of of omni-channel experience right so you have so many places where you meet your your customer you you've met you're going to meet them at the website and in the newsletter that you send out and in email campaigns and then SMS and push notification and the ads that are running on Instagram and the, you know, the influencers that you just basically launched the campaign with. You have all those parts. Eventually, everybody will go to the website, obviously, because this is where the conversion happened. But what we're trying to do is we try to connect with as many sources of data as possible to create this omni-channel experience. So if you, know, if, if you sent out a, an email, we have a native integration with Klaviyo, so that means that once someone will click on a specific product or will visit the email and will come to the website, we have this data and we can leverage it to basically keep the same messaging, keep the same content, show them the relevant recommendation. So that goes to emails, to ads, to SMS, to push, to whatever. Perfect. So omni-channel, as you say. And I think, would you say that's like the, the future then of, of e-commerce, the way that we're going with People expect to be able to interact with your brand through multiple different channels. This is our bet. I think it's been known for a lot of time. So I think in the past, what happened is that you could have seen big companies, big startup companies, okay, like tech providers, offer a full suite to basically offer offer brands and merchants the omni-channel experience. So you could have seen a company such as, for instance, Dynamic Yield, right? that has been in the forefront of personalization for years, got sold to McDonald's, and then uh, I think McDonald's resold it to MasterCard. But basically, they built everything in-house. So they were building personalization over email. So you could have sent emails through the system, and you could have do SMS through the system, and personalize the website, and they had support for in-app. And building those really, really robust platforms with deep technology, but... Coming back to the, you know, to the first part of our conversation, I think that you need, you need to have manpower to basically operate the entire thing and you need to have deep pockets to pay for it. What we are trying to do is in saying, all right, Omnichannel is obviously working and it worked years for, for the enterprises. It worked for the Zaras of, of the world and it worked for the Nikes of the world. And if the big boys know that it's working for them and they know how to handle it and how to basically orchestrate the entire thing let's see how we can take it and offer it to to, to small and medium-sized businesses but in such a way that will work for them so instead of uh, developing everything in-house we know that there are specific apps out there that you know have been part of the standard so for instance Clavio, right so we know that 
there are more, obviously, more in that category, but we know that a lot of brands that we work with is Clavio. So we've integrated with Clavio to basically share data with them and bring their data into dialogue. So when you want to create this, you know, this bridge between um, the two dots, you're able to do it relatively easily without basically the need to buy this very, very robust and, and, and expensive platform. So you can start cooperating between different service providers. Fantastic. So I want to tie back around to what you mentioned about the personalization aspect of a website when visitors get there. So I think in the future, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think we'll look back at the way that people interact with websites in the future as it'll soon be quite old fashioned that everyone had a very similar landing page, no matter what you've seen on the website beforehand. And we'll, we'll be surprised at how websites used to look because it all, you know, we, we had static landing pages, no matter what type of customer you are, no matter what you've had, you've clicked on. Do you see it going that way as well? And more and more customization coming into Shopify stores and, and, and websites in general? I know for a fact that Shopify is heading that direction. We, we had calls to them. We had conversation. This is absolutely where the market is heading. And I think that it makes a lot of sense. You know, it makes a lot of sense. You have, even if you don't want to personalize the website for each individual user. So this is one-on-one -on -one personalization is the next step, right? Hyper-personalization is the next step. But also like, you know, it's the first step, like segmentation. Understand that you have specific type of audience. You can break it down into two, three, four, five different categories and offer a better experience for each one of those segments in a relatively easy and cheap way. You don't need to work that hard and you don't need to pay that much to do that. And it drives significant value, not just in terms of increasing conversion rate and AOV, but also in terms of retention. Think about it. Like if your competitors will offer a better experience, if your competitors will offer better discovery for the same type of users, then you are left behind. You want to be in a place where you offer at least at the very beginning, some sort of a personalized experience to your audience. And I think that when you look at where things are going, it will be standard, even for the smaller brands. They'll just be expected now moving forward that when you go onto a website, you'll be surprised if it's very not personalized. And if it doesn't speak to you straight away, then perhaps we'll just we'll just learn that as a, as a consumer that we just bounce otherwise. James, I, I think it's even subconscious, you know? Like you're going to one of those websites and you don't understand why you don't enjoy or what happened. It's like, you know, when you go into a restaurant and you could, and you can't put your finger on what's wrong or why is the atmosphere is better there than here. I think it's the same, it's the same feeling. So when you go into, you know, you go to one website and you feel like navigation was good and you feel like they, the messaging was right and the, and the content was align and the products that you looked and even the offering for the cross-selling like those are little pieces that will basically contribute to the whole the whole picture and the whole experience that you've that you had and you know at the back of your mind in the back of your head uh it, it it will be there for better or worse yeah for better for worse. yeah and you won't even even necessarily realize what they've done you, and you won't be able to necessarily say it out loud but you'll just feel at home it will feel easy, like they know who you are and uh, you'll just work your way through that, the customer journey, essentially, always feeling like they're the right place. Exactly. And I love this analogy when, you know, when you go to a restaurant, it has exactly the, the you know, the, 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 the lightning is bright and, and the sound is right and like little pieces that completes a really great experience and you want to be in that place. Yeah. And we can create that with our, with our stores. So for, for people that are, relatively early movers on this and listen to this podcast and realize that there's an opportunity for people to get ahead by by jumping in what, what do you think the rewards are potentially for people that that jump in and, and start to personalize their websites above and beyond their competitors i think that the first part obviously is you feel better about your product right so your product is not just the product that you sell it's not just the shirt or the um soda can that you've just invented it's the product is also your brand. Uh, if you have, if you've invested in your brand, if you've invested in design, and if you've invested in coding, so it loads fast and smooth, then this is part of the investment. You want to invest in the shopping experience. You want to make sure that the recommendations are set and they are clear 
and they are relevant. And if you're doing cross-selling and if you decided to go for cross-selling, you don't want to make it too pushy and you don't want to harm the experience. So basically that's the first part, I think, answer your question. And, and the second part is obviously you measure everything in bottom line revenue, obviously also profits, but um, you want to make sure that you're not just pouring money into uh, acquisition. That's there is more to it, right? So you can reach a certain scale when you uh, optimize uh, your uh, media buying and your acquisition strategies, but without a proper strategy or at least a minimum viable impact on the shopping experience on the website, there's a limit to how uh, fast and how uh, big you can be. I agree. Ultimately, we're pushing people to a website and if your website doesn't speak to those customers, then that's where the conversion is going to happen. So some thought needs to go into really optimizing that as well. And I like that consideration as as a dropshipping store, you know, e- e-commerce. And, and oftentimes when we're dropshipping, we're, we're selling products from suppliers and there may be the same product available at other stores as well. So the differentiation piece is, is really key here, I think, um, to actually differentiate. And the way you can differentiate is that your website speaks to the customers more than any other competitor does. I think that 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 really is a way to differentiate yourself compared to your your competitors if you're speaking directly to that customer and they haven't caught on to this trend already. And James, you know, I think that before you had to differentiate yourself, I think that nowadays if you don't do that, you're left behind. Yeah, it's it's, it's actually not really a a decision that you can make now. It's something that you have to be that you have to be. I, I read a book by Seth Godin and he talks about it all the time in his marketing. It's you have to be the outcast, otherwise you, you know, you'll, you'll be left behind. You can't make a decision anymore. It's a case of you have to, what is it about you that is the purple giraffe or the phrase that, that Seth Godin uses to, to really stand out? So you mentioned as well, a couple of the, the tools that you have is like you package things together that you'd otherwise have to get from Shopify apps. So that, I guess that's a key part then of, of dialogue to actually package that all into one, one nice clean package. Yeah, so... so, so- our vision there is to basically what we say is this. So from the user eyes and the user perspective and the sh- shopper, when they go to the website, they don't really care, you know, what's running in the back, right? That they care about is what type of experience they're getting. So you want to make sure that it's the best possible. And in our eyes, to offer a, a really, really good experience, all of the parts that you started to work on optimizing needs to sync, okay? And I can give a, a, a specific example. So if you're landing on the homepage and you received recommendations of some sort, all right, and you decided to click on one of them, then on the next page, you need to get this data for the next offering. Same, by the way, if the shopper lands on the homepage and didn't click on something, right? So for every step of the user journey, the dots need to be connected. Um, this is how we view it. And in, in, if someone added something to the cart and you try to upsell them on the, on the cart page, and then you try to maybe uh, in Shopify, there is something called first purchase. So shopper, after they checked out, you can offer them a one-time offer. Usually what we see uh, with brands that work with us, they incorporate uh, discount inside. So it doesn't make sense to upsell on the cart page and not take the data and consider when you go for the post-purchase offer, right? So you don't want to be in a place where you offer the same product again, or you don't want to be in a place where you show a product that is basically really close to the product that you offer the second ago, the user decided not to click on. In our eyes, everything needs to be synced inside the uh, website itself. If it's you know, the recommendation in the, in the homepage to the upselling in the cart, to the post-purchase part, to the bundles that you show on the PDPs, to the content that you show, everything needs to be synced. And in order to do that, you need to have one source of truth. You need to have one platform where everything's happening, where all those, what we call them, assets are communicating with one engine. And this is basically the way we view everything. Fantastic. And what I'm getting is that there's plenty of little levers that we can pull as a business owner to increase the conversion rate and the average order value. But with the business models that we teach, we want people to be able to run lifestyle businesses. 
so they can set up an e-commerce store and not have to constantly be going in and seeing what works. So I think the fact that it's all dynamically evolving based on the customer's actions and the fact you haven't got to go in and check the data and see what's worked for somebody else and do that for another customer. I say that's probably one of the biggest features for people that want to run a business that they're not constantly having to optimize themselves. Absolutely. I, I, and I think, you know, as a business owner, you need to realize, you know, how, how much bandwidth you have, right? And how much time you're willing and effort you're willing to put into a technology that you acquire. Uh, and you need to be honest with yourself, okay? Sometimes there is a gap between what you want and what you're able to deliver and invest it. Um, so the way we've, at least from our end, and I see, you know, there are great solutions out there that do it a little bit different. That, but at least the way we we view it from our end is that for every asset that you will create through the platform, the default would be that it's it's going to be it's going to run automatically. So you don't need to do anything basically to you don't need to segment it, put in rules, or do any optimization. It will run pretty much automatically. And then there are some automations that we've built for the ongoing optimization. If you have time, then by all means, we do offer, you know, additional capabilities so you can dive deeper and, and start creating your own segments and start placing rules on top of them. And if you're not 100% sure of an assumption that you have, you can A-B test it. And then um, you can track performance and A-B test again. So you want to be in a place where you know exactly how much time you have to invest and be true to yourself. And then if you decide that you don't want to invest too much, and for the very beginning, at least, as the first step, you want to do everything automated, then that's good enough, I think, for the beginning. Yeah, I agree. I think the assumption with, with busy business owners is probably the default setting is correct to have the automated and all the learnings that Dialog has to be able to use that without having to tell it what you think is the best way to do it. Dialog will already have the, the best practice built in. So it will do that for you. And if you've got time to invest and you want to be able to pull the levers yourself, then you can do that. So yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic tool that I'm you know excited to dive into myself. And for anyone else that is keen to to learn more, Omri, and, and work with you and, and your you know, and Dialog itself, where should, they, where should they go for that? So first of all, you can reach out to us through the website, uh, leave your details, we'll come back to you. And I'm telling you this now, I'm not sure when the podcast will be released, but we are restructuring our pricing uh, to make it more accessible for everyone. So that means that we are introducing a new package, self-serve, because for a lot of time we've been working to optimize um, you know, the user interface on our side to make it. I think Dialog has a great user interface. We get a lot of uh, uh, Good, good feedback, you know, from from partners and clients that we work with. But we really wanted to make it easy and intuitive for someone who's just landing for the first time and they know exactly what to do and how to do it. So we've been working on this for quite a while and we've restructured our pricing to basically support even smaller brands than we are supporting now. So essentially, everybody will be able to uh, leverage parts, at least, of the, of the platform. And that goes also to your previous question. So first of all, as of now, people can reach out to us on LinkedIn. They can reach out to us on their website. And I think by the time this podcast will be released, they can also go directly to Shopify and install the growth package, which will be completely self-serve. Uh, we have included free trial within the package, and we also going to introduce a free package for a test drive of the platform. And on top of that, uh, we will launch best practices. So once you land into the platform, you'll see between 20 to 30 variations of assets ready to use with automations in the background. So you can, with two, three clicks, we'll be able to deploy them into your website. Those are best practices over the course of four years, and they will be available in the platform. Amazing. Fantastic. We'll make sure there's a link in the description below this video or in the show notes of the podcast. So people can jump straight over there and no matter what level they're at, if they want to get ahead of the game and start to personalize their website for their customers, then that's the place to go. So thank you very much, Omri, for joining us on today's episode. Thank you, James. It was great. Well, Lewis, that conversation certainly was an eye-opener with Omri. I think the level of personalization that Dialog can bring to an e-commerce store is revolutionary and it's clear that tailoring every customer's journey 
to really speak to them on the journey that they're on with your store is going to be the future of e-commerce. Yeah, absolutely, James. What stood out to me, I think, from the interview was how Omri made it just seem so simple to integrate such incredibly advanced personalization into a store. So simply, it was incredible. I think implementing Dialog's strategies is genuinely going to transform how customers perceive and interact with our stores. So yeah, making them feel like it was just made for them seems like the right approach. And I think that's going to be the future of e-commerce. Exactly. And it's not just about improving and increasing your conversions, although that's, of course, a major plus. It's also about that lasting relationship that you need to build with your customers by making their experience as personalized and as engaging as possible. And this really aligns with providing value first, which is something that we always emphasize. Exactly. And speaking of value, combining the insights that Omri shared in today's episode of the podcast with the structured approach that I lay out in my book at htabook.com, it can provide you with a comprehensive strategy for success. It's about leveraging that personalization while also ensuring that your business foundations are solid. So for anyone looking to apply these strategies effectively, htabook.com is the place to start. Enjoying the podcast? We'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment or a review, and we might just feature it on an upcoming episode. Also, for detailed show notes and resources, head to dropshipunlock.com forward slash podcast. If you found value from any episode of this podcast, please take just 10 seconds to leave us a quick five-star review on your podcast app of choice. It helps us more than you could imagine. And who knows, you might just hear your comments on the show. Thanks for being part of our community. Your support helps us keep delivering a new episode every week. Now it's time to answer a question that we've had in from a listener. So remember, if you want your questions answered on the podcast, simply leave us a comment beneath the YouTube video version of the episode. So this question has come in from Tom Johnson, 128, and he has asked, I struggle with procrastination and I find it difficult to get started with my business, even though I know that I want to own my own business. How can I get around this? Thanks for your question, Tom. And I totally understand procrastination is something that, yeah, can can get to us all at, at certain stages in our journey. So I think the first thing that I would suggest as a way of tackling this or preventing it from occurring is really dig into the the deep, compelling reason that is pulling you towards wanting to start your business in the first place. If you just see it as this kind of chore, something that you think you need to do, but that it becomes a, a chore that you just will constantly put off, you will procrastinate. You will find other reasons not to get started. But if you really have a strong why that serves as like your North Star and it guides you towards those goals that you want to get to motivates you through the challenges and that procrastination it really can be the fuel for your ambition like if you want to provide for your family or if it, that's maybe that you're personally craving freedom from a nine to five job that you're currently in whatever your reason is make sure that you remind yourself of it daily and work towards it because that's the thing that will get you through that procrastination it's very difficult to just rely on willpower if you don't have a clear reason why that you're aiming for at the end of it. Try and remind yourself of it daily, but also be grateful for it in, ad in advance for the things that you have. So for example, using the present tense, you you'd say, I'm really grateful that I no longer have to work a nine to five, that I'm free to travel the world with my family, that I have the finances to be able to spend my time doing the things I like. Even if you don't have those things currently, Visualize them in your mind every day, every morning, write them down and recite them. And very quickly, you'll find yourself starting to take the actions of someone who is in that position. And before you know it, those actions lead to the results, which eventually get you to that position. So it's, it's not a case of act first and then become later. You need to become the person first and then you, you will take the actions that are in line and are congruent with that person. Seems a little bit backwards sometimes, but that's generally the way it works. And it's, it's really powerful. The other thing is make sure that you're not trying to reinvent the wheel. There's so many great training programs out there that not only equip you with the necessary skills and knowledge, but also it, it psychologically commits you to your goal. It's like, you know, people that buy a gym membership. If you have the membership, you're more likely to get out of bed and go to the gym. You invested your money into it or a personal trainer who's holding you accountable and says, I'll meet you at the gym at 8 a.m. You're going to get out of bed and go and meet them there because you 
you have that. Firstly, you have the structure, but also you now have the accountability to do it as well. So there's really no prizes for figuring it out yourself. If there's a proven model out there, then go and use it, go and apply it and adapt it to, to put your own spin on it. Because that, yeah, the other way is just a lot slower and a lot more expensive. And finally, I think the importance of surrounding yourself with other like-minded individuals. I think it was Jim Rohn that said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Well, joining a community of fellow entrepreneurs or aspiring business owners can really provide you with that support system in the moments of procrastination when you really need it. It's that inspiration that you get from being around people who are already where you're trying to get to. That accountability of they say, well, you said that last week you were going to do it. We're on our meeting again this week. Have you done the thing you said you were going to do? If it's just you relying on your own willpower, that's very difficult. But if there are other people who are rooting for you and are, are, you know, they're ready for you and waiting, but they will hold you accountable, that's incredibly powerful. So yeah, don't try and piece together all the pieces of the puzzle yourself. If you can get in a room and a group of friends who already have that puzzle completed in front of them, it's much, much easier for you to see exactly how they did it and become the average of those five people. Pick them very, very carefully. Fantastic. Thank you, Lewis. It's a great question, Tom. I think we've all understand what procrastination is. But with that, listen back to that answer from Lewis, and I'm sure you'll know exactly how to proceed if you ever feel like you're procrastinating again. So now we're also going to highlight a recent review that we've had for the podcast. So thank you very much to Adam Bailey, 1500, for the YouTube comment. And Adam has said, you have really simplified the process and taken a lot of stress away from how to get started. Amazing. Thank you so much for your review, Adam Bailey. Really appreciate it. And as we wrap up today's episode, one question that I have for you is, who do you know that could benefit from hearing this? Open up your phone now, open up your contacts, open up your recent WhatsApp messages, your text messages, and click share and send them a link to this episode today. Just say, thought you might enjoy this. Someone who you know has been contemplating starting an online business and would benefit from that financial time and location freedom. That tiny gesture that you make and then think nothing more of could be the thing that changes the direction of their life for the better. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Dropship Unlocked podcast. We hope you're walking away with insights and inspiration. To kickstart your e-commerce journey, grab a copy of my book, The Home of Turf Advantage at htabook.com. It's a distilled guide based on real experience to help you build your e-commerce venture. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more strategies and success stories. And if you like what you heard, a five-star review would mean the world to us and you might just get a shout out on an upcoming episode. And finally, thank you for deciding to spend your time with us today. We can't wait to bring you more insights on the next episode of the Dropship Unlocked podcast.